why did the 737 MAX fail? The reason was, Airbus had just released the A320neo, and Boeing knew they'd make a big loss from it. So they decided, we're going to take our 737 and make a better version of it, otherwise known as the 737 MAX. The problem was, pilots weren't given very were given minimal training on this new aircraft and in the trailer it tried to make it seem the most like the old aircraft that they could. The, the thing is it was not. Due to the engines being above being above the wing that means you could pull it up and you could and it go up too far and could cause a stall. So they installed a new system called the MCAS. The problem was pilots didn't know that there, wa that there was MCAS on board, and they didn't know how to disable it. The other problem with it, and after two fatal crashes, the 737 MAX was brought back, all the MAXs were grounded and brought back in to have a software update to make the MCAS less aggressive. But the damage had already been done, the 737 MAX failed. Why didn't the Boeing 747-8 sell as well as Boeing had hoped? The Boeing 747-400 sold over 300 passenger models, but the 747-A only sold 47. Why is that? Probably one of them is that the price of it is 418.4 million to buy, and that it's a four-engined airliner. Two engine aircraft like the Triple Seven have have excellent range. They're very efficient and they don't use as much fuel. And they carry almost as much passengers as the 747 8. But the thing is, the 747 8 was still a success. Over 103 cargo models were sold, and, and that did mean that the 747 8 wasn't a failure for Boeing. Why was the MD-11 more popular as a freighter? The MD-11's maiden flight was just over 31 years ago, and when it first was was up for sale, it got orders by 12 airlines. But on, but over 10 years of it being built, only 200 were made. Its older predecessor, the the DC-10 sold 450, and the Airbus A340, which wasn't that popular, sold 375 over its nine years of production. The MD-11 was more popular as a cargo plane, was because cargo airlines tend to operate them less often, and the MD-11, since it had three engines, was very fuel hungry. But the thing is, 107 MD-11s are listed as active today. They are all cargo. Why doesn't the 747 board on the upper deck? The 747 will definitely go down as one of the most iconic airliners in history. And the thing is, there is that top bit. And as you notice, there's a door. Why don't people use it? It will be a whole lot more easier than just taking the steps up. But, but, the, but here's the reason why. The first thing is, there isn't, it isn't really that, it isn't really that needed. There are only, even on the 747-8, only like 32 people are up there. It's not really important to have at that point. And the, se and the next thing is, it's an emergency door. And I guess you could probably say wha what it's for. And the problem, and the other thing is, it opens upwards. Which is an immediate problem, because it, pro it reduces space. Do you know which airlines still operate the Boeing 727? There are 38 Boeing 727s listed as active today. They are operated by 23 different airlines, but none operate more 
than four of them. 727-200 is the most dominant variant in the cargo, and 28 out of the 38 are cargo variants. The remaining 10 are passenger models. Is it possible to recognize a Boeing 747 among all the airliners? Very easy to do. The way you notice it, it has that big hump on the top. By differentiating the Boeing 747-400 and the Boeing 747-8. Well, how you tell the difference between those is, the 747-400 has a, uh, has normal looking engines and has a, has a little bit of a bit sticking up from the wing tip. The 747-8 has, has a lot, has, has different engines and also it, it's bigger, it's, a, it's definitely noticeably bigger. And the final thing you will notice is that the wing is just made of one part, not at, at the edge, it curves upwards. It's not just a separate part.